Hello everyone, it's Tracking Pat from Track Machine Tools and today we're going to do a video on using the RMX offline programming system. Let me set up a scenario for you so you know what we're talking about. You've got your machine all ready to go and you're cutting some parts and now you've got a couple hours worth of machining, whether you have an operator running it or you're doing it yourself, and you want to get started on the next project. So what I'm going to do is use the offline programming in my PC in order to make the next piece part and have it ready to go when the first one is done being made. So here I am, I'm in my PC, or looking at the main screen here like you normally would on the RMX, and I'm just going to go to check system and get started. So in here I have all the exact same functions that I, that I have in my machine, and I'm going to go straight to the programming mode and it's asking me for a part name or a number. So I've already got the name in there at this point and it's asking me what do you want to do first. I'm just going to go to the beginning and start programming. I've got a 5x5 five five inch block that needs a circle put in the middle as a pocket and four holes drilled. So I'm going to start out by going to the face mill and then it asks me what the size of the part is. So I'm going to use the left, uh, upper left hand corner as my zero point, so that's zero, zero. And then my five inches and my minus five inches for the size of my block. Put in my Z rapid. And then also my depth is actually going to be zero because this is creating zero as I machine. I'm going to do it in one pass and I'm going to put my RPM at 3000, put in a feed rate to come down at 20 and I'm going to machine it at 30 using tool number one. So you see on the left side of the screen, there's my look screen with my uh, size of my square block and now I'm going to go to pocket. So I select pocket, go to circular pocket, and I'm going to fill in the information for that. So this circular pocket is a two and a half inches and minus two and a half inches, right? Same Z rapid that I'm going to use. And my final depth for this pocket is 300 thousandths. Okay. Put that in there. My radius is an inch and a half. I'm already set to cut it in climb cutting because of my default. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to do this in three passes. I'm going to leave a finished cut of 10 thousandths. And then I'm going to use a little bit slower RPM for this. Okay, my finished RPM, I can bump that up a little bit. And then that is fine for me to helical into the material, but I want to run it at a lot faster RPM once I get into the material. So I'll put it at those feed rates here. I'm going to use tool number two as my rough and my finish tool for that circle. Last but not least, I'm going to come in here to do some drilling. So I select drill. And up here, you'll notice that it's already set for drill, so I can just hit enter. Okay, uh, my dimensions for my first hole, one inch in X and minus one inch in Y. I'm gonna use 0.1 as my rapid point, and I'm gonna put my ZN to go all the way through to material, so I gotta go minus 0.5. Number of pecs, I'm gonna use six. I'm gonna slow this down a bit to 1800. And I'm going to leave the feed rate at 15 inches a minute using tool number three. Okay. Now, the way the defaults and the way the options work is sometimes I have other benefits that I can have. So I'm going to swipe backwards and I'm going to go over to the options page. And in here, I'm going to turn on the button for multiple holes. It's going to take all of this information and it's going to put it in different locations by what I put here. So I'm going to put the next hole at four inches and minus one. Then it asks me for another one. I'm going to put this one at four and minus four. And the third one I'm going to put at one and minus four. When I push complete here, that screen will close and you'll see all four of my holes are here and that's my completed part. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to the setup mode and I'm going to tell it all about the tools I'm going to use. Right? So I'm going to fill in my information here. I'm going to start out with my face mill. I'm going to tell it I'm using a carbide insert face mill. It's got eight flutes and it's two inches in diameter. The only thing I can't do is the actual Z offset. I can do that in the machine. Now I'm gonna to go to my finish end mill. It's also carbide. It's got three flutes and it's a half inch in diameter. And last but not least, I'm skipping the center drilling and going straight to the drilling process. So I'm gonna select drill and tell it it's high speed, two flutes, quarter inch in diameter and my tools are set. Now, just so you know, if I, as I make tools uh, in my programs, I can also save these in my library. Like for instance, if I'm on this tool right here and I say add to library, you'll see they'll put the information in here. I can do that with all of these and then I can keep them. And next time I don't have to do the programming, I just pull them out of the library and stick them into my program. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. And now I wanna check and see how my work turned out. So I'm gonna go to the tool path I'm going to let it calculate everything I did. And then in here, you'll see that here's from the center of the face mill. 
doing the top of the part. And then you'll see how it comes in the middle and rotates in and then comes all the way out to cut the pocket. And then last but not least, you see all the rapid moves for the drilling. Okay. I can also use the verify part feature if I want to see it better. I can come in here and define the stock. It's going to automatically populate these things, which aren't always correct. For instance, this here should be minus 0.75. So I actually have some material left over. This should be five inches. Okay. And this should be zero. So now I got it the actual size of my block. Hit return, go to make part. I'm going to slow it down just a little bit so you can see it happen. Push verify part. You see it face the top. And then do the three passes to cut the circular pocket. Followed by the finish cut for the pocket and then the drilling. And there you have it. So that all checks out, right? So the next thing I would do is exit this. I'd go to my program in and out mode and I would save this file. And you see up here that it added it to the screen right here. So now it's on my USB stick and all I have to do now is take that stick out to the machine. So let's head out there and we'll plug this in to cut the next part. Okay, so here I am back in the machine shop and my assistant has the other job and project all done. The machine's clean, ready for me to start. So I got my part from my offline programming on the flash stick. I'm gonna put that in the back of the control. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna to go to program in and out mode and I'm gonna look and right here is my program. Just so you know, if I highlight it, I can push the look on and it'll show me what the part's gonna look like so I know I got the right program right there. All I gotta do is go to open. It's gonna tell me that the old program is gonna be overwritten. So I'm gonna say, yes, it is. And now all I have left to do is two things. First of all, I gotta go to setup mode and you'll see that my tool list is in here from how I created it. All I got left to do is touch each tool off and set my offsets. And then I would go to my DRO mode, set my zeros for my piece part and I'm ready to go and I'm making parts. So what you should see there is I probably got a couple minutes worth of work to do here. And other than that, I'm up and cutting chips again. All that dead time of programming has been done while the machine was making money and cutting me chips, right? So hopefully from that, you're seeing that you're getting a big benefit by using the offline program. This one particularly is for the RMX, but we have one for each of our control systems. So whatever product you have, it'll work for that too. And I want you to think about it like this. If this makes sense to you and you want to learn a little bit more and see if it fits the way your process works, then call your local rep, look us up on trackmt.com and check us out on either Facebook or YouTube or Instagram. You'll see this video and many more to come and hopefully they keep working for you. And in the meantime, just remember to keep on tracking.